In case you didn't already have reason to despise the mainstream media and establishment Democrat activists, I give you a powerful thread from journalist Andy No. He highlights a fake Twitter account that has created a series of tweets accusing the Texas governor of trying to silence people who have uh, who are related to victims in the Texas tragedy. To put it simply, this guy made a fake, fake post where he said someone came to his house and threatened him and said, you're going to we're going to pay you to pose with the governor and say no gun gun control. And then all of a sudden you get Democrats and media activists acting as though it's true and using it and they believe it. These are the same people that believed Jussie Smollett. And this is why we can't have nice things. Now, perhaps many of you are loading up the car, getting your coolers ready because it is Memorial Day weekend and you're going to go and relax. And the last thing you want to hear is all of this. Sure, guys, ladies and gents, have a great weekend, man. But for those that are really concerned about this, this is the kind of stuff you got to share with your uh, your friends and your family. I say it often. A lot of people ask me, because I, I get asked this all the time, how do I explain to my friends, to my family, that the media is lying? Now, many of them don't want to watch these videos. I get it. But you can at least try sharing this one and say, just give it a chance. Just give it a chance. Many will say no, they won't. If you are someone who has overcome your biases, your biases, that your friend is a conservative or you think he is, and you said, okay, fine, I'll give this video a watch, then you are a critical thinker. And that's important. We may disagree. That is always allowed. In fact, I encourage it. Comment all of your disagreements with me. But I appreciate every single person who comes to watch this to see this thread and take it with an open mind. And we can criticize the media and these Democratic politicians over this. And it does not mean that the media is always wrong. And it does not mean that Republicans are right. I do not like Republicans. What I can't stand is when they lie to you. I want to solve the gun violence problem. I really, really do. I don't I don't like what we see. What, who does the, No, no honest person? You know, people are saying Republicans like what's happening. No, 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 they don't. They just disagree with you. Stop viewing the other person as a demon. It is not correct. Now, ignorant, probably correct. And this is why y'all are being kept ignorant. Here's a thread from Andy No. He says this thread from a man who claims Greg Abbott sent the Texas governor sent a rep to offer money to pose with the governor for uh, Uvalde has gone ultra viral with the left. But I looked into who is really behind the account. Jason R. Nortz, 43, is not from Texas. He's from Spokane, Washington. And in fact, shout out to Yasher Ali, a journalist who also called out this fake thread. And it's really obvious if, you, if you're a critical thinker. Twitter user MyCancerJourn3 says, We were finally able to see my living nephew's body to confirm identity. Shot in the face while leaving to return home, we were followed by what we assumed to be media, which when we do not wish to speak during this time, which in maybe four minutes after returning home, a knock on the door. It's a representative for Governor Greg Abbott. He informed us he's willing to pay us to stand with the governor and say we don't need stronger gun laws, to which almost got this clown hurt. He was asked to leave and said that if we speak about this conversation, we'll be facing charges and possibly worse. We responded with F you. Try me and find out. Then we were told people get hurt and disappear all the time. F Greg Abbott and this harassment while we mourn. The story is so insanely false. You have to ask yourself what kind of person would believe that. Isn't it a little on the nose? Well, Joaquin Castro, Democrat from Texas, says, please DM me if I can be helpful. Why do you believe this stuff? You know, I laugh when I see the websites like 1776 Patriot Warrior dot website and they post insane fake news. Yeah, the Q people are in a cult. Hands down, it was some of the most mind numbing nonsense when they're like, on March 3rd, Donald Trump will emerge as the true president. No, he won't. Come on. Isn't that a little crazy? These things don't happen. Now, certainly you can argue that is a normalcy bias, that because we don't have weird off the cup presidential declaration, I don't know what you'd call it, 
secret missions of a real president. I mean, that's just ridiculous. It just doesn't happen. But when you see establishment politicians believing this, what else have they believed? That is nonsense. I want you to look deep down in your soul and ask yourself about Jussie Smollett. If they lied about that or were wrong about that, what else were they wrong about? And I implore you, I am not telling you to go and sign up for the GOP or be a Republican. I don't care if you're a socialist. I don't care if you're a communist, an anarchist, a capitalist or whatever. I just want you to know the truth. That's it. Oh, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Jason R. Nortz has claimed to be on Twitter a 9-11 first responder, a Purple Heart recipient, and to have had another nephew that was killed. No one with his name has received a Purple Heart. He is an anti-Trump activist who has boasted about shooting at cars with Trump flags. Many left-wing verified accounts have amplified the claims and made it go viral with no independent scrutiny. It conforms to their bias, so that's good enough to be true. An editor at the Austin Chronicle was among them. <clears throat> and it's not over yet. Here we have Richard Whitaker. Hey, Speaker Strauss, time to make a public statement and demand that Abbott explain this. Yeah, Abbott's going to be like, it's fake. It's a fake post. So it's, it's probably a 12 year old. You know what I really love? I think Elon Musk tweeted this. On the Internet, you don't know if the person you're arguing with is 14 and they probably are. It's really amazing. This is why I don't argue with people. At least I don't argue with people to argue with people. Often if I respond to someone, it's to just argue to everyone. Like I will respond to someone to get my idea out to everyone else, not to these individuals. Because often the person who says something dumb is 12. Here we have v uh, Veronique Madrano, important thread. Greg Abbott attempting to coerce victims. It's remarkable. All verified. Ellen Hopkins, holy ish, read this short thread, especially if you live and vote in Texas. Oh, my God. Titus. Oh, Titus. You guys know Titus the comedian, right? Read this. Greg Abbott is over. Why? This is why we can't have nice things. Multiple Pulitzer winning L.A. Times columnist Pat Morrison helped amplify this. The claims. <sighs> what do you do? What do, you, what do you do when these people are the ones who are trying to pass gun laws? Now, for all of those who are liberals and see this, many of you may be saying, wow, I thought I believe I believed that too. Maybe you're saying I would never fall for that. Many of you may be saying, yeah, but let's talk about the real issues of gun control and everything. I'm totally down. I am not saying that every single liberal fell for this. I am saying prominent Democrats, journalists, Verified personalities all fell for this. So you need to be careful because you will often hear fake news as well. And you need to ask yourself, if not this, perhaps something else you read, you believed. And, you know, goes on. CBS 46 News anchor Sean Gables amplified the claim. Amazing. As did Keith Olbermann, who frequently falls for hoaxes. USA Today digital producer BG is Brandon Gray as well. Left wing activist Amy Siskind, who has shared many hoaxes, amplified the claim. Sassy Mamain LA, an editor for Entertainment Weekly, called for the FBI to investigate Governor Abbott. Other journalists also jumped on the story. Jason Noritz, the Spokane man who claimed in an ultra viral thread to be a family member of a deceased nephew, also claimed to be black. His Facebook profile before it was deleted shows photos of a man who isn't black. Actress Rosanna Arquette thanks Jason Noritz for his courage. Katie Hall, a reporter for the Austin newspaper, The Statesman, and chair of the Austin News Guild, reached out to Jason Noritz to ask him to help her amplify his claims. I'm a reporter with the American Statesman newspaper. Please DM me so I can share your story about the encounter that you had. Absolutely remarkable that they fall for this stuff. Jason Nortz also claimed to have been a prisoner of war, 9-11 first responder, a Purple Heart recipient, having another nephew killed prior to Uvalde and being offered a bribe by Governor Greg Abbott. I was a prisoner of war. It's all fake. All of it is just absolutely not real. Did you get kicked out of the army? On the Internet, no one knows you're actually 14 years old. 
How are we supposed to solve these problems if all of these prominent individuals, including a Democratic politician, fall for such obvious lies? Let's talk about gun control for those that are tuning in. I have this story from Metro News, West Virginia, Charleston, West Virginia. Man dies after opening fire at apartment party in Charleston. Nobody was hurt except for the shooter. This is not a story to tell you that a good guy with a gun will always solve the problem. It may just be something you've not seen. That's all. Anecdote is not data. Okay. The plural of anecdote is not data. I am not showing the story so that I can make an argument in absolute. I'm showing the story because perhaps people did not hear this. And when you have a story about Uvalde, you also have similarly a story like this. Charleston police say a man who died after firing at party goers at an apartment complex was known to law enforcement, similar to many of these school shooters. Charleston police chief Tyke Hunt was Dennis uh, said Dennis Butler, 37, is a convicted felon. And they said several run ins with him before. Butler was killed after he pulled an AR-15 style rifle at a group of people attending a birthday graduation party at the Vista View Apartments located along the 1300 Renaissance Circle. A woman in the party drew a pistol and shot Butler at or around 10.45 p.m. No one else was hurt. Hunt said it was too early to tell if this was a case of self-defense, but no charge had been filed at this time. It looks like the person who fired upon Mr. Butler does not have any reason to prohibit them from carrying a firearm, firearm lawfully. In West Virginia, similarly to Texas, we have constitutional carry. So what happened in West Virginia? A man pulled a rifle. He fired at a party, and before he could kill anyone, he was killed. I'm sad this happens. I don't like these stories. But sometimes a good, a good guy, in this, one, in this case a woman, I believe it was a woman, yes it was, uh, can stop the shooter. Now let's take a look at Uvalde and talk about the reality of what happened here. Both left and right are upset because the police did nothing. You've got pro-gun leftists, socialists, saying... The police should not have stood in the way of the parents who were armed and wanted to protect their kids. You have liberals, anti-cop liberals saying, why were the police doing nothing? They could have stormed in the building. Well, they, they didn't want to go in or risk their lives. Yeah, they did to save their own kids. You have conservatives saying this similar to the left. Why were they barring parents from going in to save their kids? One woman breached the perimeter, got her kids out. It's crazy. Some of these stories. But I think we need to address the issue here. The issue at hand as to why we can't solve this problem is because of both Democrats and Republicans. That's it. Democrats will espouse nonsense. Not every single one, but enough of them to where you see this garbage I just showed you. Republicans will pander to the nonsense and do nothing. None of this actually solves any of the problems. If you are someone who believes in background checks, I have good news for you. We already have them. If you want to buy a gun online or in person, you go through a background check. Now, of course, I know. We'll steel man the argument. There are some circumstances where you can sell privately and there's no background check. But this is typically in states and in, you know, between family members. When we see these mass shootings, they are typically legally purchased firearms and they're typically handguns. If you didn't know that, give it a quick Google search and take a look into this. It is not the rifle. When people say that most uh, mass shootings are done with the AR-15, that is not correct. It is mostly done with handguns. And it makes sense. You know why? You can conceal handguns. I mean, you can conceal an AR-15, I suppose, if you're wearing a trench coat. But typically, it, you can't. Which is why you, in, in, in many states, you can't, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's considered non-applicable when you talk about concealing a rifle or a shotgun. For handguns, there's heavier restrictions on acquiring them because they can be concealed. You'll notice this too. If you go to states that have gun control, you want a handgun, you got to pass a test. You got to go through a background check. It takes a long time. You want to buy a rifle or a shotgun, you can walk in, fill out your background check form and wait for the FBI to clear you. But I want to make sure that's clear to all of you. I'm hoping this video has found its way to people who are pro-gun control or otherwise. And uh, um, make your arguments in the comments. I, I, I long to hear them and have a real conversation about what we can do to prevent this stuff. If you are someone who's conservative, as I, as I stated before, or libertarian, share this with people you know so we can have a real conversation. The FBI has to approve you to buy a gun. 
If they don't, then five days later, you get cleared. What's five days? California is more strict. They have their own waiting period. But if you walk into a gun store, I would say, I would like to buy an assault rifle. You know what they're going to tell you? We don't sell any. Actually finding a store that has assault rifles is going to be rare because they have to be pre-1984. This is, this is due to gun control in the 80s. Ronald Reagan, I believe, uh, in, before he became president, so this is, I can think of the 70s, uh, he was very big on gun control. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of Ronald Reagan. Uh, some, some good things, for sure. I mean, you know, I'm not going to just blanket every single person. I think Joe Biden's done some good, despite the bad. It would be absurd to claim everything he did was bad. But this is where we are. If you would like to buy an assault rifle, you have to fill out a, a, a form for the ATF, and it could take up to one year to actually get it. Did you know that? Now, you might be asking yourself, that can't be true because they're talking about it in the media all the time about people buying assault rifles. I got news for you. They are wrong. They don't know this. There's something called the National Firearms Act. It prohibits the ownership of certain weapons, such as short-barreled rifles, suppressors, more commonly referred to as silencers, but they don't really silence anything. They're called suppressors. And they're very, very loud. When you put it on a gun, it does make it more manageable when you fire the, the loudness. But trust me, if someone was outside and they had a suppressor and they were firing, you would know because it is very loud. In order to get one of these, you have to fill out ATF forms, pay a tax, and it can take up to a year. You have to get fingerprinted, go to your local sheriff's department, get, get all the work done, bring it back to the gun store, submit it to the ATF. Congratulations. The whole process may take up to a year. If you want an assault rifle, that is the same process. Now, for a standard modern rifle, for any purpose, you are required to undergo a background check. When you go to a gun store, when you buy online, they will ship it to a gun store, not to you. You can't do that. The weapon will then be delivered to a licensed gun store, and you will have to fill out a background check form. They will then contact the FBI to make sure you are allowed to purchase a weapon. In Uvalde, this young man passed a background check. There were police on scene and armed parents. What could we do? I genuinely ask you, what could we do more? Lock the school down? Perhaps. Apparently, I'm reading that some teacher propped a door open. Security violation. If the teacher hadn't done that, we wouldn't be in this mess. If the police moved in, we wouldn't be in this mess. The police were pursuing this, this guy. When he ran to the school, they chased him into the school. I cannot give you an easy solution to these problems. And anyone who claims they can is selling you something. Arming teachers? No. That is not a solution. Personally, I think individuals have a right to be armed. I believe, like with this story, there's a strong possibility if the teacher, janitor, principal, or otherwise was armed, this likely would have been, let's just say, mitigated to a certain degree. I don't think you could stop it. I don't think having armed people on, on, on the site would stop it. The police were there. Armed parents were there. In fact, when the woman went in to save her kids, she didn't stop it either. These things happen. We have a sick culture. It's not guns. You know, people say, if he didn't have such easy access to guns, this wouldn't have happened. It's another argument for a maybe, a maybe. Well, arming a teacher is a maybe as well. Neither of these are solutions. You can certainly say you want less guns on the street, but I have news for you. 3D printed guns exist now. You can make a gun very easily. And many of them, you should watch the videos on this stuff. There's even th metal 3D printing. So they, someone can buy one of these things and be, be mass producing guns and you have no idea. One of the earliest was called the Liberator. Now they're, it's way more advanced. But the Liberator was a plastic with a thumbtack. Didn't last very long. Only fired a couple rounds for sure. But 3D printed guns are becoming more and more ubiquitous. Gun control, limiting the purchase of guns, isn't stopping this. You ban the AR-15, they'll use an AK. You ban the AK, they'll use an M1A. You ban that, they'll pick up a, a Benelli semi-auto shotgun with an extended uh, magazine tube. They'll, they'll pick up a KSG-25 with mini, with mini shells, and they'll have 41. 41. They're, it just, 
these ideas, I can certainly understand a good faith effort on either Republican or Democrat, whatever. But these don't actually address the issue. And I don't know what does. I'm not here to tell you that I have the answers. I don't. I'm here to tell you that these mainstream personalities too often believe lies, too often believe fake news. And then they report it to you. Did you check? I don't expect you to always. Your job is not to be a journalist or politician. Your job is to be a teacher, to be a doctor, to be a plumber, to be a driver, to be a trucker, not to sit here and read all day, every day, this information. But there's a problem. Snake oil salesmen exist, and they always have. They seek to sell you a lie. They want money and they want power. And that includes Democrats and Republicans. So fact check what you can, please. And if you aren't sure, and if you haven't read it for yourself, don't be so adamant to assert that you know it to be true. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcast. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.